Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass and yeah. banging chicks and drinking beer. No, not and me. Smoking I'm, not weed. me. I'm, married. Oh, yeah, well, I'm married. I'm married. Jake. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> off panel, off topic with Jake and Tyler. Welcome back to another episode of Off Panel, Off Topic. It's going to be another half episode. Um, because we're going to be talking about a game today, a very, very good video game from Square Enix and Eidos Montreal, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. And this is a game I'm excited to talk about, and uh, the reason it's a half episode is um, I I originally wanted to do something where I was going to reach out and have another guest, but the internet situation at my house doesn't really uh, let that happen. So uh, that's, you know, another tech issue that we're having to deal with. We had some in our last episode when we did our Eternal review, uh, Eternals review. Why didn't they call that movie The Eternals? It drives me nuts. Anyway, uh, this is, a like I said, a half episode because, well, let's be honest, Tyler doesn't really play video games, and um, I do. So I wasn't going to deprive you of having that because, you know, it's comic books and pop culture. So we're not just talking about movies and TV. If there's a chance for me to talk about a video game that is a little bit more related to the stuff we talk about, I want to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about every video game. Um, you know, I'm not the next big game that I'm thinking about is Halo Infinite. I don't know if I'm going to do a whole podcast dedicated to that. So, who knows? Maybe I will, maybe I won't. We'll see. Also, it's our podcast and we'll post what we want to post, damn it. <laughs> So let's talk about Marvel's <clears throat> Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm going to be totally honest, this is a game that kind of flew under my radar. It's a game that I honestly forgot was coming out, which is silly because it came out the day before my birthday, which, you know, you'd think I would remember that. <laughs> which is funny because, uh, again, with my current situation and uh, my internet situation, I can't play a lot of the games that I wanted to play or or have been playing on Game Pass. So I uh, saw this show up in the uh, on, on the internet again, and I was like, oh, shit, I totally forgot about this. And then I, I read some reviews and looked at some things online, and people seemed to like it. They seemed to say that it was... Because what I was worried about is if you follow what Marvel and Square Enix have done with their games... um. Yeah, uh, Square Enix really fucking hit missed the boat with uh, Marvel's Avengers. I think that made me wary of this game originally because Marvel's Avengers is a game that I feel, and we I've talked about it on the show before. It's definitely an example of the. I feel like superhero games are generally better when you have a solid single player experience. And I'm not saying you can't have co op in it. I'm not saying that. Uh, games like DCU on uh, DC Universe Online and uh, Marvel Online games are bad. I'm not saying that at all, but what I'm saying is, like a blockbuster appeal, I would probably say we'll go more single player. And I think another thing that hurts, uh, and we'll talk about this uh, later, but I think another thing that hurt that game was it came out right after you know it's we build the hype for it, and Endgame has already come out in the MCU. So all of those characters that we are are attached to or getting attached to are either moving on or something, you know, something's changing in the narratively or the actors are leaving, whatever the case may be. And when you have some very talented voice actors come in and do these characters, I don't think it works the way it does in Guardians of the Galaxy is because I don't know, those characters are still so fresh in our minds, I think. And with Guardians of the Galaxy, it's been quite a while. It's been like, I want to say five years. Coming up, it'll be this year, we'll come up on five years because the next one, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, won't be out until 2023. And so we haven't seen a Guardian, yes, they were in Infinity War and in Endgame, but we haven't seen a solo Guardians of the Galaxy movie in five years, almost five years. And... I think that little absence made us a little grow a little fonder, honestly. It, I think because Endgame was so close to this game's release, because this Endgame came out in 2019, this game came out in 2020, 
Uh, so I think that hurts this game a little bit. Is the idea of we still think a lot. We still think of Chris Evans as Captain America. We still think of Tony Stark as you know Robert Downey Jr. So to have those characters, you know, I just don't know if they should have gone with the Avengers first. I think if they would have started here with Guardians of the Galaxy, it'd be a much different story. And I know it's a different team. Uh, it was Crystal Dynamics that did Avengers, and Idos Montreal is doing this game, or did this game, whatever you want to say. I understand they're two different teams, and it, and the problem is there was two different goals. Because Avengers, and they were kind of pretty out front about this, and I think that's a big reason why I didn't really play this game, or want to play this game, uh, is it's a game as a service, which means that it's going to be a game that you're going to buy, but then periodically, well, you could also, <laughs> uh, for the people that um, actually you know listen to this podcast and play video games are probably wanting to drive their car off a cliff. I apologize. I want to explain this to everybody in case... You know, they're interested in this game, whatever. And they're not, you know, they're a casual player. So a games as a service essentially is the thing where you either buy a $60 version of the game or an $80 or $100, whatever price you want to put on it. If you buy $60, you get the standard game, but then you have to be like, oh, well, there's this new content that they said is dropping in a few weeks. Every And there's like this content roadmap of like, oh, in this, three, in this next three months, we're going to add this much loot or we're going to add this story mission or these side quests. Like it's just constantly updating the game, which I think works in some genres like Fortnite has made. A, 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 I, I don't even think you can measure how much money that Fortnite has made off uh, microtransactions and, and, and battle passes and really constantly updating their game. And that's fine. I think that works for Fortnite. I don't think that translates well to, Avengers in a superhero game and that's what I've heard rumors of that the Suicide Squad coming out is going to have the same elements I'm not saying it's impossible nothing is impossible you could make a very successful games of service superhero game it's just I just don't think that's what this should have been I think Marvel's Avengers because and again I have not played this game but based on what I, uh, of, of the uh, podcasts and, re- and, and reviews and things that I've listened to and watched about this game the general consensus is the story, the single player story is very, very solid and very good. But the rest of it is just repetitive nonsense. And I was like, well, then just make it this main story. I don't know. It's just frustrating. And based on what I've seen and the little bit that I have played of it, all of the characters play the same. They just have like one or, you know, like a, se- a special ability, but it's all like punch and kick. And yeah, we'll get into more of that too with the Guardians and how they handled that. Versus how this handled it. So let's get keep going here, and uh, as we usually do with reviews on this show, um, we usually start with our spoiler-free thoughts. Give you a chance to kind of guess what our opinion is and formulate whether you know it's something for you to enjoy. And I want to do that here as well, because there's a lot of spoiler shit that I don't want to. I don't want to ruin for you. I will say this: my my favorite thing about this game is that it is a straightforward linear single player experience and yes you can explore the environments and get like loot and uh, find alternate costumes and stuff but this is a straightforward single player experience so uh, I want to start with what I thought of because we were talking about you know uh, the the voice actors and Avengers which I thought were great but of course they had a lot to live up to with their Hollywood counterparts and I don't think that's different here with Guardians of the Galaxy, but I do think that ever I do think a lot of people like Star Lord's Peter Quill, but they're open to different interpretations, and we'll get into this. So, what I thought about the Guardians, Star Lord uh, was played by John McLaren. I I I will say right out the outset, I think the Guardians were cast very well, and John McLaren is definitely a lot different looking star lord and a different sounding star lord and i think that works for this game now i i don't know what it is with the avengers designs and their looks but i just and i think i'm going to stop comparing them at this point but i don't know just the general look of this game feels different and i think his performance isn't as goofy as chris pratt's it, it it is a little bit more commanding of the situation, but that's not saying that he isn't funny in the role. I think I think he does a great job of being this 
unbelievable leader, but also being a total goofball. Um, Kimberly Sue Murray plays Gamora, and Gamora is probably the. And I've seen this in other reviews, and I and I do agree with this. Gamora is the most different of the characters. She is not anything like Zoe Zaldana's uh, Gamora in James Gunn's movies. And that's fine. I like that this is a different uh, uh, approach. And I've told this on this podcast, I've said this to Tyler, I like the idea of having these adaptations and having different takes on, on the character. And I think, honestly, hot take, I like Gamora in this game more than I like Gamora in the movies. And that's nothing against Zoe Zaldana. I just like how this character is portrayed in this game. Jason Cavalier plays Drax. Drax is so fucking funny in this game. <laughs> there were so many times while I'm in the middle of battle or, the, or I'm going to the next uh, sequence, you know, of the story, and he will just say something, and I'm I'm cackling like that. It, it, he was so fucking funny in this role, and that's enough, that's just the beauty of Drax. Drax is such a fun character because you can really play with that that idea of. Uh, our language because to someone that's literal it's probably really hard to understand our language because of our idioms and our and our metaphors and our like it's it's really funny and he's great in it and when we get into spoilers they do some things with Drax that I just absolutely did not expect and it really caught me off guard um I I I, I really apologize if I screw this name up Alex Weiner maybe Weiner uh Voices Rocket, another great performance. I th- again, I think that the voice cast does a great job of the Guardians themselves. The writing and the and the performances do so much to make you really care about these guys. And it's, I I think that's what really made me fall in love with this game. And then Robert Moncalm does uh, Groot. Who uh, Groot? I'll say I think Groot, and you could probably say the same thing in the movies too. But this game really made me think like Groot is the best of all of us. He he's such a such a wholesome character. And like there's a part in the, later in the game, um, where and I'm not gonna spoil it, uh, where Peter is giving a speech and he talks about Groot and he says, "You never complain." At least I couldn't tell if you were, but I don't feel like you do. Like it's true. I just think Groot is a good guy. He wants to take care of everybody. You know, we are Groot and all that. Now I'm crying. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and, uh, so the, the general cast, the Guardians of the Galaxy, I think they were freaking, why did I censor myself? Fucking awesome. And, um, I can't, I really hope this game gets a sequel. I really, really hope this game gets a sequel, because I would love to see these guys, uh, continue giving their performances, because they are really, really fun. Um, the style of the game in its, of itself, as we're still going through our spoiler-free thoughts here, I love the style of this game. Now, I I do have some issues with the gameplay, and I and they're not. It, it's honestly a little nitpicky. Like I I really don't think that it 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 hurts the game in any way. I just feel like there's some sequences where I wish, and I've again talked about this before. I wish I had the ability to control all the other guardians in combat, and being able to hit a button and switch and fight his rocket and do something, and then switch to Groot or Drax or whatever, um, but I also understand why they didn't do this. In my, in my, my takeaway from it was rather than take away a button on the controller, why not just have it where there's just a simple move that you hit? And like we we're talking about with the Avengers, and I, I, I know I said I'd stop comparing them, but <laughs> that's is what I was thinking of. When you have the situation where you can play as all of them, you do kind of run into that scenario of you could. It's going to feel samey, and it's going to feel uh, not as fun and not as a variety. So it, it, I think it was smart of them to say, okay, well then we'll just have it where they have these certain moves that they can do, and then you can kind of try and combo off that of you know have Drax do this one thing and then have Gamora do another thing. Rather than trying to have them uh, flip between them and then not make it feel samey. Because especially with Gamora and Drax, while she has more of a um, acrobatic, quick-moving moveset versus his that's more of like just a brute force, it's still, especially with those two characters, it could feel samey in a sense of like you're just 
swinging a sword or a dagger around. Whereas Star Lord, you're using your jet boots and you're using your blasters. Rocket's got the uh, uh, like a, this uh, big giant bazooka blaster type thing, and then you know, well, well I don't need to get into all of it, but uh, I, I was just saying in general, I think I understand why they didn't go that route. Uh, but that's another thing too. This game, I think, really understands the heart and soul of what would what would was wanted for a Guardians of the Galaxy game. Whereas, as me, as a fan of both, uh, you know, I don't, I haven't really read a lot of Guardians comics, but as a fan of the Gun movies and a fan of just Marvel in general, I was already on board, and they did an approach to. That it's a it's a good way of saying like you don't need to see the James Gunn's movies or or the MCU movies, you'll have a little bit of familiarity with it. But for the most part, this is very much your own story, and this is going to be very this is going to be more going to places that uh, they haven't gone to in James Gunn's movie and introducing characters that that they haven't in James Gunn's movie. And I like that. Again, I don't want the same experience. I don't want to play Vol- uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One and Two. I don't want to play that. I want to play some new adventure and a different take on these characters. And while, again, a lot of the MCU's characters and style do play a role in this game, and and I and it would be stupid not to. I think it's very smart to keep blending in that MCU because Guardians of the Galaxy does not reach the popularity that it has if it isn't for those movies. So, of course, they're going to use elements of that movie in this game. And I think, and we'll get to it in spoilers, I think it's a perfect blend of this an entirely new original story, the comics, and the movies. And I, I think it does a great job. And I, and I can't, I don't know if I can k- keep gushing about it for another 20 minutes or so, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, I love the humor in it. I think it's a very funny game. Again, several times in cutscenes or... Uh, just walking around where I'll catch a, hear a line or two and I, and I I chuckle and it also adds to how much I love this cast and this team they they do such an amazing job of making me really really care about them and uh, quick on uh, spoiler free thoughts I do love the the alternate costumes uh, I do think it's kind of a very old school approach to make it where you have to uh, find them in the environment and find them on the map it's kind of refreshing instead of having just a shop there that you just buy it from. I, I do love that you you know you have to explore a little bit, and even though I did have to look stuff online to get some of them. I'll be honest. <laughs> so now it's your warning. Three, spoiler. This is spoiler territory. Two spoilers. Spoilers. One. Now we're in spoiler talk. So first off, I love the fact that they chose a villain that's in the comics that exists in the lore and it's not one that a lot of people are going to be familiar with the universal church of truth they are the main villains of this game and i'm wondering i'm curious if they will play a role in guardians of the galaxy volume three i'm interested to find out we'll see because i have no idea what they're going to do with that movie but uh universal church of truth i loved uh, this decision to have these guys as the villain, I thought it was really cool. And uh, you know, as someone again who I don't really, and we talked about this in our Eternals review. I I do think the cosmic uh universe, the cosmic canon, whatever you want to call it, of Marvel, I I have a little blind spot for me. I haven't read a ton of those that stuff. Um, uh, but. It's so like this. Th- these characters are such a cool concept because it's the idea is in the story they they run their ships, they run all everything they have on faith energy, and they get the faith energy um, from people believing in the universal church, church of truth, and people accepting the promise. Now the promise is this idea that if you accept the church and you 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 know you're like I'm going to pledge my life to the church uh if you accept the promise you essentially become brainwashed and you become kind of part of like this cult hive mind 
And to accept the when when you want to accept the promise, how you do it is it provides you what a a, a loved one that you lost, and it gives you a chance to be with them again. And that was such a bizarre uh, turn for me because. You know, as the game starts out thinking you got to pay a debt to the Nova Corps because you went into, uh, you you were trespassing and stole a llama, which you thought was going to be this big monster. It turns out to be a llama, and so you're trying to pay that debt, and you go to this thing called Lady Hell, this woman called Lady Hellbender, who is a character that, again, was someone that was in the comics that we haven't seen in the movies and I thought she had a really cool character design and I loved her level because you're all fighting these monsters and trying to uh trying to s- you have a a lot of choices in this game and there's dialogue options so either you're taking Groot or Rocket into her to sell them cuz that that was their big scheme to trying to get money and then uh you end up robbing her and that's what I thought it was going to be was this fun swashbuckling adventure and then <laughs> as I keep playing through this game, I'm like, man, this is just hitting more emotional beats than I expected. Still very funny, but at the same time, I'm like, dang, okay, we're getting deep in this. And when you accept the promise, yeah, you essentially give yourself up to the church and become part of this big hive mind. And, and uh, it gets weirder in the story because then you find, but this is why I'm wondering if they're going to do this with Guardians of Galaxy Volume 3 because I didn't expect this either. As you're going through the story, you run into Adam Warlock. And Adam Warlock is what I love. Oh, my God. How they did Adam Warlock in this game, I hope they do in the movie. Because he's so ridiculous. And he's sh- so Shakespearean. And he's he's got to have, like, like he... In the They make a joke about it when they're like, you could just say thank you. Or uh, I think he said, oh, I, we're good, is what he says at the end of the game. And it's like, yeah, you got you could have just said that. that you didn't have to go through this huge diatribe. And I love the, the way that they make Star-Lord uh, and him interact. And I think that could be a f- good tool of comedy in the movies as well. But Adam Warlock, and a character that I know of that uh, I really thought... they Again, they did a really cool adaptation of him. And the, I really liked the performance of his character and like how he plays into the story and all that. But... I love them as the villains. I love the idea that it, it, it went to places I didn't expect because the idea of taking the promise is you get to live with that person that died, but it's all a lie because you're actually just being a part of this hive mind that's going to eat up the whole galaxy, which is fucked up when you think about it. <laughs> but um, I love that so much. And then th- because there's a sequence where you all are getting... She, you know, the main villain who is a uh, Nikki, who you think is your child, but is it? Uh, there's this whole thought that she is the chosen one to cause the uh, what do they call it? It was it was something that that, that she was going to be the one that brings forth the idea of them consuming the galaxy, and she all puts them in in a situation where they're all. Th- in each other's minds of their promise of what their promise would be. And Peter's, uh, I hits hard. <laughs> All of them hit hard. Um, uh, but Peter's is a little different because throughout the game, you're getting little flashbacks of him with his mom. And you see that she, in this story, she dies because they're, they, uh, I think they said the centurion ships were coming to kidnap him because this sticks to the comic book origins that he is the, the prince of Spartax. And he gets his blasters, which I didn't know about this until I played this game and I actually read this up. But uh, in, in this lore, the same as the comics, he's a Spartax soldier in in a sense that he has these two blasters that are elemental. And in the game, it's ice, fire, wind, and lightning. And whenever the situation would arise, he his gun would form into something new and help him out of the situation create the element which is a really cool concept from the comics that went over to this game so i didn't know about that so that was an interesting reveal too in in the flashback but in the flashback he tries to go down and fight and save his mom it doesn't help they could they grab him and kill her essentially so in the promise instead of it being 
kid Star Lord. It's the Star Lord we know now, and he goes down and saves his mom. And again, this is spoilers. So I, you, 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 I'm assuming you played this game. If you've gotten this far, do play this because this part is really important to their portrayal of Star Lord. So he's fighting them off. He fights them off, and every, everything works. She hugs him, and she, it's really tight. Now I tried to break out of it because there's an option to tap a button to break out of it, but it wasn't working. So I was like, well, maybe this is a bug. Maybe I should just let myself die and start over from the checkpoint. Because his mom keeps squeezing him and squeezing him and squeezing him. And you don't let it go. You snap out of it. You're working on your truck as Star-Lord. Your mom goes, come in. Dinner's ready or whatever. So you're like, oh, sure. You come in. And then I've noticed if you don't do anything for a second, you see like the the... The, the rim, the, I don't want to say the rim, but the f- end of the frame of the TV, you start to see this black stuff come in from the corners. And then eventually it just consumes you, and then it goes credits. So I was like, and I knew this couldn't have been the end of the game. So I was like, wow, they're really pulling a, they're pulling a um, Arkham Asylum on us, where it's, you think the game ends halfway through the game. And I'm like, what the hell? And the credits are rolling, and then it gives you the option to uh, reject the promise. And then so when you do that, you fight her off, and then you shoot her with your blaster. And I was like, damn, we're going to make Star-Lord kill his mom? But we all know that it's not really her. It's a part of this illusion. So that's how he breaks free. And the thing is, is you find out a little bit later in the game that Drax didn't break free. Drax accepted the promise because when you wake up, he's looking at you, and his eyes are glowing purple like the people that have been... uh, a part of the promise. So I was like, oh shit. So this whole sequence of getting to him is nuts. Well, even before that, I'm going, I'm getting him as a, even before that, we got to talk about Cosmo, the uh, telepathic Russian space dog. Uh, I love him so much. (laughs) No, it, it, it's such a cheap move uh, to put a dog in a game because it's going to get me to like him. I'll just say if there's a dog in the game, I'm going to like him. It's just fact. Um, no, but I loved his uh, portrayal of having him guardian of galaxies, how, you know, uh, or guardian guardian of ga- guardian of galaxies, and he said another version of it, but it's just funny. Uh, but he's very thick Russian uh, accent on this telepathic dog, which is I love it so much. And I know that they've made ref that he was. I think he was in the collect with the collector in the first Guardians movie. But they've definitely made references to him uh, in those movies. But we find we get him right here talking to us and everything. And I, I think it, I think it gives another level of heart to the story. I know it sounds silly to just be like, "Well, that's because it's a dog and whatever," you know. No, I'm just saying that uh, in his story, when you find out that he, he accepts the promise, or and I because I fucked up the dialogue, he accepted it in my story. But I it, there is a way that he doesn't accept the promise or whatever. But like his promise is he just wants to be back home. He just wants to be on earth. And again, it adds to the heart of this story. And I think what makes this story work so well for me is there are moments of a, a, a lot of uh, heart. <laughs> I wanted to use a different word, but that's all I could think of. Uh, it, there's just something special about it. And that's why Cosmo is the bestest boy. It's true. Um, and I know I kind of touched on it a little bit on Peter's flashbacks. Uh, I did like them. I did think it was uh, important to to have him be... Because they could have easily just made it one long cut scene. But to actually have it where you're interacting with the environment and you're talking to her and making choices, I think, actually adds to the experience. And uh, I think that's why, again, that promise sequence was so much more difficult because you did have those flashback sequences. Um, I, I like that Nova Corps is a big part of this story uh, no, because you you have to pay them. Uh, that You also meet Nikki and Corel, and then there's a whole thing with Corel because she was a fling back during this galactic war that we don't know about. That there is reference throughout the game, but it's not. Uh, there's no flashbacks to it or anything else, but it is just. I think it uh, uh, add to the world building. 
But you guys hooked up back at the in the Galactic War, so now Peter Quill thinks that Nikki is his daughter because the math adds up. Twelve, she's twelve, twelve years, like that whole thing. Um, yeah, I I, th- I thought that was an interesting dynamic because again, we're we're used to the MCU. You know, Guardians. Most of us are, so we just assume that Gamora and Peter were going to be a thing, but they they went a different route. So I like that. I uh, also like the fact that she was part Kree, and uh, we know what, if you've seen the MCU, if you read the books, you know what the Kree are, and they're bastards, and they're portrayed as such in this. Uh, so I like the little references here and there uh, that show up. Apparently Stan, Stan Lee is in this game somewhere. I, I, I haven't looked it up, but I don't remember seeing it, but I think there's like a picture of him somewhere or something like that. Uh... Yeah, and then we I've already talked about Adam Warlock. I think his portrayal is really cool. I do okay, so the Church of the Universal Church of Truth and Raker are like the main villains for a while. So then what happens? You find Adam Warlock, and Adam Warlock says it is the the black evil is Mangus. That is uh, oh shit, I I'm I, I'm all over the place. I apologize. Uh, the Drax story, where after he accepts the promise, um, and you go inside his mind with the help from Mantis, and when you go inside, when they go inside his mind, it is extremely tragic because his promise is he wants his daughter and his wife back, and his promise is he's just being a father, and he's just being a family man, and this is an, a side that. You don't really see of Drax because everybody sees him as Drax the Destroyer, just beating up everybody and laughing and you know all of that. So to see this portrayal and to see this whole sequence is really fucking tragic <laughs> because the whole sequence. At first, you fight, you fight, and and in this canon, he killed Thanos. So in this, you're fighting the all of these Thanos guys attacking you and and you're you're trying to defeat Thanos and then eventually you I think it's it's one of those things where it's designed that you lose to continue on the story because he just constantly keeps replicating and then you get to the next part and you're you're just chasing after Drax cuz he's ch- he's chasing his daughter he's playing with his daughter and he's kind of a ava- not really avoiding you but kind of avoiding you doesn't really know you're there but then when you get to see him and you have to, and you have uh his family talking about you know like let's go to dinner and everything. He's with his family and just having that moment of him looking at you know Peter Quill and Quill just being like, "It's not real. I know you want it to be real. I wanted it to be real. It's not real." And then seeing him go and hug his family and talk about how much he loves them, and then stabs him in the gut was like, I'm just like, uh, well. Yeah, I mean, what a, what a fun game. Like, I'm just sitting there just in tears, and I was like, what? I did not expect to have such an emotional beat to tracks. And then you find out that it's all of these characters. Not to that level, but uh, Rocket has a moment where he talks about how much he hates being wet, and we're like, why do you hate being wet? And he's like, because they tortured me. Their experience, their experiments and in, in the torturing had to involve with water and, and being in a tub and stuff like that. And it's like... Damn, dude. Okay, game. We get it. Cause in the in the gun movies, they're 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 kind of vague with what happened. But this is when they're like, yeah, no, I was fucking waterboarded. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, and then we find out in this story that uh, Gamora killed Nebula, Nebula, and she deals with that. And it's like, and then I, and I think that's what always makes Guardians work so well is that acknowledgement of. Why we are so attached to this team and these characters is because they're all so damaged and broken. They all lost their family. And now they're getting an opportunity to get one back. And they really drive that home in this game that this is and like they do in the first movie. They really do drive home that idea of these guys have nobody else. This is all they have uh, is, is a tree, a talking raccoon, uh, you know, a uh, uh, I can't remember the race. <laughs> Thanos' daughter and Thanos' killer. There. It's some dude from Earth. Uh, Yondu is referenced in this. That's nice. Also love the fact that they bring in this character called Old Glory who I knew nothing about and he was definitely just fodder because you fight him in a, in a space dog fight. It's kind of hilarious. 
Uh, but overall, as uh, I'm wrapping this up here, I, I, I think it's an amazing experience. Uh, and I'm definitely mis- leaving things out um, that I wanted to talk about. But, you know, it, it happens. It, this is what happens when you do a half-episode solo show. It's just, it just is what it is. Um, I, I'm, I'm very happy that I got to experience it. And, and uh, funny story as we wrap this up, um, this was a game, like I said, that kind of flew under my radar. But it came out the day before my birthday, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to get myself a gift. <laughs> and I told um, my wife about it, and she's like, yeah, but we don't have internet. I'm like, nope, it's a single-player game. And I even bought it on disc. That's how excited I was to play it. I bought it on disc. That's right. And, uh, no, it, it was it was such a, a refreshing a uh, reminder of how much fun it is to have that linear single player experience and and yeah we had we were spoiled with that in the Arkham series and i think that we kind of you know i i don't want to say it was a terrible decision from the avengers game but i i, I think it was a, a bold decision i think it was a a, a different strategy and I think that they may have done a few things differently and given them. I just think they crunched too hard at the end. I think they would, they should have just given themselves more time. And I know it took a long time. Like I, this game was announced or teased way back in like 2015, uh, but it was something different. But Guardians really drive Guardians of the Galaxy really drives home that um, if you make a very strong, compelling story with, you know. I'm not saying the combat was bad. The combat was fine. I would have just made some tweaks here and there. But to have those two things, like a solid combat system, a very, very good story, that's all you need. And I had a blast. And I I really... And you know, this is how much I enjoyed that game. My first thought was like, should I do... I'm like, I'm going I'm to do, do uh, New Game Plus just to go back and get all the costumes that I missed. Like, that's how good of a game it is. So um, I would absolutely recommend it. And I know I spoiled some of it for you. I did not talk about everything because there are some things I think you that people should experience themselves. Probably skip that Drax part, maybe. Or the really any of the promise stuff. Should I have not done a spoiler? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks for listening to episode 20.5. Uh, we'll be back next week, I'm going to say, because, man, two... two episodes you get the eternals review you get the guardians of the galaxy review i mean we're giving you all sorts of content here at off panel off topic thank you so much for listening i need to stop rambling i got things to do and uh, i know you do as well have a great day play some video games watch the movie do something I don't- and that's it